Did you have any type of premonition or feeling that the blacklist would be so well received? Or was it again something that you were very passionate about finding out more? It, it was something that uh, fascinated me. And because uh, I came into Hollywood and experienced what was the tail end of the, of the people who had been blacklisted. I studied with an amazing, wonderful uh, acting teacher named Jeff Corey, who had been blacklisted. He was an actor who had been blacklisted. And I didn't know much about the blacklist, but all his students knew that the only reason that Jeff was teaching was because he was blacklisted, because otherwise he would have been such a working actor that none of us would have had the benefit of his gifts. And so there was a kind of an interest for me because of that. And then um, I met a woman who told me that her husband had been blacklisted. And she started telling me stories about the blacklist. And suddenly I was hearing names that I was dealing with in Hollywood as an actress. These were people that I had auditioned for, people that I had read for, you know, that I had worked for. And I thought, wow, this is all like been dusted under the rug somewhere. Nobody, nobody talks about this now. And so I said, are any of these people still around? And she introduced me to the entire blacklist community. And I found them to be some of the most wonderful creative, smart people. And then I realized as I started delving into this, these people had made some of the great movies that had influenced my life as a child. And where were they now? They weren't working. And movies had taken a big swing in a very superficial direction, you know, the it was the the age of the beach blanket bingo movies, the the, uh, the the Elvis movies, and movies had just gone into a very superficial place at that time. And as an actress, I had wondered, you know, where were all these great parts, like these women who had had great parts in these movies? Well, they weren't written anymore, and the writers who wrote them weren't around anymore, but they were alive but they couldn't work. And so that became a very interesting subject matter for me. And again, to the credit of AFI, I took my camera equipment and I went out and shot an interview with this one woman and submitted it to AFI and they gave me a grant to start the movie. So that's how the blacklist got off the ground. So it sounds like a similar parallel with the girls in the band because you dipped your toe in the water, you became very intrigued with the subject. Exactly. Matter. Starts with one interview yeah. and then goes from there. Yeah. Wow. Do you think any type of blacklist exists today? Maybe for different reasons? I don't really know that. I, I keep seeing things in, in the papers that, uh, saying blacklist but it has some other kind of meaning. It doesn't have the same kind of meaning as what was happening in the, in the 40s and the 50s in this country, because that was political. That was government inspired. Whatever blacklist there is now, that's internecine warfare inside of studios with agents and stars and stuff like that. And it doesn't have the gravitas of what happened in the 40s and 50s. Yeah, you were nominated for an Emmy Award, yes. is that correct, for mm -hmm. the blacklist. Was that something that you ever envisioned, or was that a goal of yours, or it just happened because you were so passionate about the film, the interviews, that it showed on screen? You know, while you're making these things, it, somewhere in the back of your mind, you're hoping you'll get recognition for them. And a lot of people were saying to me, oh, you're going to get nominated for this. I know you're going to get nominated for this. And... I always kind of put that into a nice little compartment on the side and say, oh, that would be really nice if that happened, but that's not why I'm doing it. And then six o'clock in the morning one day, my phone rings with a friend saying, you just got nominated. <laughs> and I thought, whoa, <laughs> okay, that's great. So it was great. What were some of the lessons that you took from doing the blacklist onto future projects, either pros and cons, things you never would do again or that you would definitely repeat? 
Well, the Blacklist Project took me 10 years. And after I finished it, I said, you know, I can't do another project now that's going to take me 10 years. I just need to do something different. And so I went into the commercial world and worked in all those other jobs that sustained a career for me and, you know, got me into the Directors Guild and did a lot of nice things for my career. But um, I knew that if I got into another so-called passion project, that it was going to take a lot of years of my life. And so I didn't want to do that for a long time. I did a lot of other documentaries, but they were short, quick things, mostly for television, mostly documentaries for hire. And it wasn't till this project came along that I said, okay, I know what this is going to take out of me, but I'm ready to do it again. That was a long time. <laughs>